Yes, I can hear you. Not a test to see if I can hear you on the live stream, though. I see something on the screen. Okay, could you um, could you say something about like um, Microsoft Education so then I can uh, try and uh, see if that's gonna work, on, or I can hear it on the audio on the YouTube. I can hear you typing. Okay, so I'm just going to have to just help and play this. So I think I'm just trying to zoom a little bit. Let's see if I can make you a co host. Okay. Um, can you say something? People are wondering whether or not we can hear your audio. Because there are some people who are helping with the stream. Can you hear me? I'm going to ask if they heard that. Yeah, there's me some buffering because <laughs> I'm at home, so I'm not using industrial content for that. <laughs> whatever, whatever.
I like all those features that they have in this. Do you have uh, the YouTube ch the page p pulled up? Yeah, I just put mute on my microphone. Because <laughs> I'm using like the Blue Yeti um, uh, USB microphone. So yeah, I just didn't notice that until I was like trying to do something. But yeah, so um, yeah, so yeah, if you go to the YouTube page, so then basically you'll be able to see it. Now, of course, what it shows on the YouTube page is not necessarily going to be um, on time because obviously there's a delay. There's like a few seconds delay. What well, we're trying to test that right now is if you can actually hear the audio. So this. Now it could, yeah. Okay. Now I need to make sure it's not okay. Okay, let me see now, okay. Is it working now? Because I turned down the music. Worst case, I might just have to have it all running through Zoom and then just put it into a chat and then just have OBS copying that. Okay, then... She is speaking. So, so in some ways, with, were my notes kind of uh, clar clarifying in any way, like um, in terms of basically what we're going to talk about? It's not necessarily going to be like super probing. It's more like some of the intentions of Microsoft. So a lot of our parents can really understand, like, oh, so Microsoft's doing this for these and these reasons for computer science, but also chemistry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to sort out the uh the audio.
connect some this. Now, are, are, is your store still doing any training, or are they kind of waiting till everything kind of returns to normal? Okay. Oh, excellent. So, um, yeah, definitely keep me clued in if there's like some virtual presentations that we can be a part of and basically can take advantage of. Because um, definitely we're interested in um, getting more involved. Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Can so you hear me? Yeah. So okay. it seems like it's going to have to just go through mainly the desktop audio. And I'm just going to have to not use my mic for this one. Okay. Because I definitely see it more now. And then they see that. We'll just work with that. So I'm just going to fix the, how Minecraft looks. Back. I'll roll down the crowd. Because getting on the server this morning was, uh, yeah, interesting. It seems like a lot of people are playing Minecraft right now. What was that? It seems like there's a lot of individuals playing Minecraft right now. Oh, it could be. Yeah, because it was uh, hard for me to get onto the server this morning. Okay. Now I'll turn down um there, so this is a whole bunch of feedback. No okay, hopefully it's not kicking me back out. Why is it so zoomed in? Time? Okay. So cooperate. And we'll start in about six minutes. Okay. Okay. 
This is gonna be a little bit of buffering for some of the people, but you know, they'll have to get used to it. Because, yeah, everybody's on the internet right now. Okay, so all of our audio is working. Everybody can hear you now. Great. Because if you, I'm pretty sure Microsoft has some solutions that we could take advantage of um, since we now have um, the Office 360 license that could really help us in terms of like streamlining some of the things we're doing. Yeah. What kinds of things were you hoping to explore? I see you're doing, yeah, like live streams. We definitely have that in Teams. Yeah. And also we're looking into virtual classes. Um, mm -hmm. And for myself, it, virtual classes, um, specifically in coding and how to like share code. And um, so if I'm typing on a document, how would I be able to share that with other students, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. I could show you how to do that because that's all something you can do inside of Teams. Um, in Teams, you uh, a teacher can create a virtual classroom so all the students could be joining in and you could schedule times where you're going to be online and you could be sharing your screen or working on a virtual whiteboard or even, um, like you mentioned, if there's like a document that you all want to work on together at the same time, like generate ideas or something like that, you can now, do that too. Would that also work with like, I know um, Visual Studio Code is a program that allows you to do text coding and and it allows you to have access to a variety of extensions and everything else. So you can really explore like coding and how and previews and like H what websites and everything else. Is that something that could also sync with um, teams? Yeah. Um, I have to check whether that's something that you could, because in teams you could even add third party applications or different Microsoft applications in your classroom team so that everyone would be able to access it really easily. Awesome. But with something like that, you could also just in your class, like share your screen and pretty much do anything that you would do on your device and your students would be able to see it and chat and come off of mute and ask questions and all that. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So I'm about to give you the little introduction that I got. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll get uh, started. Um, obviously, I give you the timeline in terms of. Um, well, I'm going to first start off like with some of the introductory levels, and then basically explain why I'm going through the introductory levels. Because that's for uh, at home, some of our parents might be like, "Okay, let me just see what Minecraft is before I have my student jump or have my child jump into it." And then basically, um, if you know any kind of tools or tricks that parents could use to help monitor and make sure that their child is because I've. Education edition seems to be like the more safer option, especially for parents, if they want to be able to um, 
their child to get an education, but not necessarily get into a lot of the blood and gore of the other stuff that people have developed in Minecraft. Yeah. Okay, so, um, thank you everyone for joining, um, the micro for joining our Kathy School Steam stream. Um, we have with us, um, may you introduce yourself, a Microsoft representative by the name of... Hi! Hi everyone, uh, my name is Camila Moscoso. I'm a Microsoft education expert and I, I'm normally working at the Microsoft store in Tyson's Corner, but our stores are closed now, so we're doing everything virtually. Um, so for those of you who um, don't know about like Kathy's school, um, this is a partnership that we've uh, started up with Microsoft when we started our Mine Minecraft education actual class and course. And what we're doing is we're really diving into um, our int being an internationally recognized educational institute and community cultural center and with year-round program that also helps develop early childhood education and also gets kids stimulated in um, coding, which is something that Microsoft is doing tremendously with and especially with um, you, you just added a Python to like the text library of codes that people can actually use and develop within uh, Minecraft, and we might touch on that a little bit. And our core aim is to really bring a comprehensive educational experience for and opportunities for children and families. Um, think of Kathy as like a one-stop shop for cultivating your ch child's interest, really exploring their strengths and applauding their achievements when, whenever, they, whenever they have them. Um, something to note this is kind of like an introduction to minecraft education there are a lot more advanced things and features within the program i'll be showing some of the different levels and levels of education that are actually within the program like with the elemental builder and a few other things and also um, um camilla is going to help me in terms of basically guiding you through like some things that i might miss or basically some things that are really that Microsoft is really tailored to be able to help with um, education, especially like they have math courses within the education edition. But we're going to be exploring the chemistry edu chemistry edition or the chemistry lesson. So if you are able to log on, you are already at the top of the chat. You should have like what if the username and log on that you can use to access the server. I will not be in the same server. We have to be on the same network to do that. However, we, I am going to be walking through. I'm going to first start off with um, the beginning stages. So that's going to be like the introductory course. Right now, here I'm at the actual Minecraft education screen. And then now I'm going to step into the actual play area. So once you arrive at the main play area, usually during class, you can create and like host an actual a teacher or instructor will actually host an actual area for the kids to play in. There's a lot of different features that you can actually allow the kids to craft, but also make sure that they're also being socially responsible in terms of basically not just playing and perpetuating, they're actually getting creative and, and uh, creative things done on task and you can actually set those settings within that. But today we're going to go through the li we're going to go to library. Then I'm going to go to how to play. These are very good games when you actually get into Minecraft on basically how a child can actually learn some of the keyboard techniques or some of the things that basically are now kind of distant for a lot of students because glass screens are are glass text or glass texting is kind of the thing, but keyboards are somewhat foreign. So that's something that um we're we're going to be exploring with some of the starter starter lessons. So Camille, like um with my with uh, Microsoft and their educational practice, like what what was the what was the process of them of them becoming Microsoft and or but really diving into education in general? Was it did they always just kind of have education in mind but then they start building tools or what was the process of this yeah so we realized that there was definitely a need to start getting students at a younger age to develop skills like coding and computer science because if you think about the future that students are going to be entering it's very different than the future 
that we're currently that the the present that we're currently in. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of jobs in the future are going to be more automated, and students are going to need to also be able to, um, or jobs are going to be less automated. So students are going to have to be able to solve, you know, global complex problems, and a lot of those problems can only be solved through things like coding and artificial intelligence and computer science. And schools aren't really emphasizing enough these skills. It's not really a main subject taught in schools. So we started building out different tools that would introduce students at a younger age to these concepts, to things, um, to things like coding, which used to be super complex to learn. You had to memorize a lot, and it was very challenging and confusing, but you can get students at a younger age into these concepts with things like block coding and things like Minecraft, where you're interacting with the fun, you know, game that kids love, but you're doing it with coding. So we started building out tools like Minecraft, also um, Make Code, which allows you to program video games. It's also integrated with Minecraft as well, um, just to start getting students at a younger age interested and introduced to these important concepts. Okay. So uh, is it man so I noticed that it isn't just block coding. I mean make code is that like block code in JavaScript or is that just or is that just um is it, or what is that? Yeah, it's actually both. Um, so you're able to do the program entirely with block coding, but at the same time you can view the code in JavaScript, which is really cool because you're actually seeing like the real code used to make what you're what you're creating. Um, and we also have this website. So it's built into Minecraft Education Edition. So you don't have to download anything extra to be able to use that. But also, um, MakeCode is a website that you can go to and see other games that have been created with MakeCode and then create your own games by kind of exploring how other games are created with MakeCode and kind of piecing together your own um, video games. So it's a really fun way to get people introduced to coding. Awesome. And this was something, so was there any influence um, like developed from like Scratch? Like what, what makes make code different from like Scratch? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's similar. I think, um, I mean, the fact that it's based on, on blocks, but with, um, I have only looked at Scratch a few times, but um, with make code, you're able to see in real time like how your game is being developed and getting to practice um, and seeing, okay, wait, the thing isn't doing what I thought it was going to do. I have to go back and debug it. So it's it's very similar in the way that it's very kid-friendly and that it introduces the same kinds of essential concepts with coding. So we have a few people in the chat who are like right now trying to sort out um downloading and processing so i'm going to wait a few moments also my computer is just loading a little slower um as you can see on the screen but in terms of um like you guys also offer and once your store is obviously back open or are you once you get get more information definitely interested um the ver the classes that you have on site like what do some of those look like in terms of like coding experiences yeah, so we do have different classes that are um, series. And so I think one of our most popular classes is called um, Create and Design Your Own Video Games. And so with that, it's every day of the camp, you are building up skills to be able to then eventually create your own video game, an arcade-style video game. So in the first one, it's quite simple. You're just being introduced to... Um, you know, the coding concepts and um, how to, you know, what is a, what are um, things like sprites and variables and things that are pieces of a video game and then how do you actually create them using code. And then as the week progresses, you are creating more and more complex games until finally towards the end of the, the on the fourth session, you're creating your own video game. And so we also do classes with, um, we have kind of all kinds of classes, not just coding, but we do classes on like creating videos with mixed reality and 3D. And, oh, augmented reality? Yeah, we do that too. 
Okay. So we have um, a Paint 3D, which allows you to create uh, 3D objects or also take 3D objects that you find online and draw on them, edit them, add, you know, if you take a dinosaur from online, a 3D dinosaur, you could add wings or whatever you want. You could be really creative. And then with the Surface Pro, you have mixed reality. You're able to film yourself, but then have your object in it too. So we've seen some really creative um, projects with that. And yeah, we have, we have a lot of different, even on showing kids how they could get introduced to Office 365 using things like Word and PowerPoint to come up with a business plan and pitch a business idea or to come up with, um, think of a cause that they really care about and champion uh, like a campaign for that cause. So kind of all over different subject areas, but everything from creativity to computer science and coding, um, business, leadership, entrepreneurship, all themes that we cover in our classes. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to try and restart because it seems like it's stuck. The Minecraft, but at the same time, um, I know there's a few others that are trying to download and it's taking a while. Yes, the servers even this morning have been quite filled because there are a lot of individuals who um, are try who are actually trying to Minecraft because they see I, or or get into it as well. Um, no, you're not going to be joining my world. You just, we're go actually going to be, um, well, you're going, we're going to be walking through the chemistry lesson once I actually get the server back up and running. Thank you for your patience while I get all this up and running. So, anybody, so it, you said that it was a browser or it was a, web, a website in terms of basically the block coding that Microsoft is uh, pre presenting? Uh, are you referring to uh, the make code? Yes, make that I was code. mentioning. Yes. Yes. Uh, you can go to arcade.makecode.com, 
and there you can um, see different games that have been created. You'll notice that some of the games have bugs and don't work uh, because those are games that actual that have been made by students, and some of them work great. Um, and on that website, you can play around and create your own game by clicking uh, Create New Game. So I would recommend uh, for something for your kids to do is to uh, play around with the games on there and see what that they like, and then to explore the code used to make it. You can compare what it looks like with block coding, which is a lot more straightforward and easier to understand, but then you could also switch and view it in JavaScript. And then um, play around with making a game in the, with the Create New Game button on there. Okay, and the website again is Make, was Arcade? Uh-huh, arcade.makecode.com. Oh, it's, it's New Project. That's where you start creating a game. Now, is there any kind of cookie agreement we have to click on or no? Uh, something popping up for you? Yes. I, for it me, it just went straight like through. Cookies. And it's, a, it's a, a free website, so it shouldn't give you any trouble. Does anybody have any, que any other questions? We can look at that until, like, um, the actual Minecraft education is loaded back up. If you scroll down, so you have um, my projects, projects that you have been working on, and you have some tutorials there, and then below that, uh, live coding, and then below that, block games. I think the Space Destroyer game, for me, it shows up as a second game there. That's kind of a fun one to, to try out. And then these other games here. I haven't played all of them. I know some of them have some bugs in the code because these are just games that have been created and uploaded to the website. Okay. Um, okay, they should see in a little bit on OBS my screen. So as you can see on my live code, if you go into your browser, it is arcademakecode.com. You just click on the little, is it like a, is that a Game Boy or what is that? With yeah, the it's a, it's a, it looks just like a little Game Boy on the side. So you have uh, controls and I'm looking at the screen through the YouTube link. So I see it's loading there. Yes, um, I went to the Space Destroyer game. Now, of course, how many? Uh, a question for the chat. How many of you know what a Game Boy is? <laughs> Has anybody played a Game Boy before? Right now, we're just waiting for um, Minecraft Education to load. So basically, we're going to go to arcade.makecode.com. I'm going to just sample some of the actual block coding that Microsoft has available because obviously we're going to be building our partnership with Microsoft. And hopefully in the future, we'll be making some trips to um, Camilla's location and you'll be able to take some classes there as part of the prizes of doing a good coding job and seeing some of the really cool things that they have available there. Like, they even have, like, a whole gaming setup. Like, some seats you can actually sit in, and it's, like, a whole gaming rig kind of setup. Like, very similar to a competition uh, style for, like, E3 or Evo. Is Microsoft still um, within the Evo or competitive gaming scene? Um, I, 
we have a gaming expert who knows all about everything related to Microsoft gaming, but we do, I mean, yeah, we have gaming competitions in the store, like gaming tournaments, and we sometimes uh, even give prizes, and sometimes those prizes are really cool. I heard um, we were having a tournament between Microsoft oh, wow. stores, and the winner got to free, got a free trip to New York to meet uh, some professional esports players and learn more about that. So we do some cool stuff and cool prizes at our gaming tournaments. Hmm. Yeah, the the sound of the when you lose the game sometimes it's very very loud. Yeah, I lowered the volume quite a bit. <laughs> I know. I always, when I'm playing it on the theater space in the Microsoft Store and I forget to put the volume down, it makes everyone jump because it's <laughs> very loud. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not very skilled with it, but that's one of the games. And basically now for the block codes, basically, do you develop this off-site and then just upload it or no? No, you can do it right in there. So in this one... Um, yeah, oh, and you see on the top there that you're looking at blocks. You can switch over to JavaScript. And then um, those things on the side that say sprites, controller, game, those are like when you click on those, it'll show you all the different block codes that relate to that uh, type of code. So like sprites is everything related to the characters and the objects in the game. So any code related to where, you know, putting your character at a certain spot in the game when it starts or moving your character will all be in the sprites section. Oh. If you go to, um, yeah, so I don't know if you can edit the games that actually I think you can go like if you find a game in there you can play around with the code and actually edit games that are, have already been made which might be a fun way to start but you can also um, go to new projects and play around with um It's kind of hard though if you if you don't look at another one first. So okay, I would recommend taking a look at another one. So in other words, like starting a new game or something else like that, like a new project. What was that? So in other words, the sprites is that like the specific buttons or what is it? Or does the controls yeah. also have its own code? Yeah, all of those things that you saw on. Um, on that screen where you were either it, it's the same thing for if you're opening up a game and looking at it or if you are starting a new project you'll see a set of buttons like sprites control uh events like other things there and you can um when you click on that it'll pull up a bunch of like a scrolling menu of all these different block codes that you can code related to the scene of the game. Um, logic loops. There's a lot of things you can play around with in there. And I don't even know all those things. Um, sometimes when I see a student creating a game, they'll show me something that I didn't even know about, which I think is really cool. Well, that's kind of a very much like coding in itself, because coding, you're, you can actually... There's never one set way of doing it, and then basically somebody might just see something you don't, and then basically you learn from that experience as well. That's why you code as a group. Yeah, definitely. There's there's always more that can be uh, learned and created with coding, which I think is pretty amazing when you kind of let everyone play on their own and explore on their own and figure it out, and then share what they're learning but it's good to um like in our in the classes that we do which i'd be happy to like share with you more information about that um we usually kind of start everyone on the same path everyone's creating the same thing just to get the basics down and then mm. towards the end once you know how to avoid certain errors in the code and bugs then you can uh more confidently and with less frustration, prepare your own game. Okay. So I'm looking at like some of the JavaScript, like move sprites. 
it seems like it's very very specific to like retro gaming in terms of arcade.make code do they have anything like um so is that are the, is microsoft at some point going to start implementing like python coding to this or to this or no that's a great question i i'm not sure i think i don't see i could see that definitely being a direction that they go in um because it could be another tab on the on the views um but I have not heard of that yet. But seeing how it was integrated with Minecraft, I could definitely see that being a future move. So with a lot of the different, so basically in terms of the virtual classes, um, what kind of virtual classes is Microsoft, um, do you think, or would be offering? So I, I could definitely see the make code class being something that they decide to offer virtually. Um, I think it would be difficult to do the 3D and mixed reality just because not everyone might have a device for that. But mm. um, though any class related to Office 365, like just learning how to use different tools that help you be a little bit more, um, that can help you out in school, I could see that being something that we are offering online. Um, we have also, like for young students, a class where they can uh, write a story and then tell that story on PowerPoint. And on PowerPoint, you know, you have things like animations and you can, you can draw something and have it move across the screen. So imagine not just being able to write a story, but to be able to do it on PowerPoint and have like animations and, and visually see what you're um, creating. And then at the same time, you can also record your PowerPoint. So you could even like tell your story and read it and share it. And that's something that you could um, have, I mean, we might offer that or, you know, you could, that could be something that, because you all have Microsoft Teams, it could be something that your class does together as a project. Um, yeah, so those are some ideas of things that we might be offering online so a little bit more about augmented reality so does that require like um any what kind of special equipment were you kind of referring to when you mentioned that some some things not might not be available do you just need like an iphone or like a like an Android phone, like what what could somebody do to maybe get into augmented reality? Yeah, anyone that has a Windows 10 device already has the applications like Paint 3D, um, Mixed Reality. Those are things that you can find ah. right on, on your Windows 10 device. And so the reason I said I, I think that might be challenging if we were to be offering it, uh, like if if the Microsoft store were to be offering it to the public, well, maybe not everyone has Windows 10 or maybe not everyone has a device that has a camera on it. Maybe they're just following along on a computer with no camera. Then you wouldn't be able to do it. But if you have a device with a camera on it and you can film and send it to a device that has Windows 10, you already have all the apps you would need to be able to play around with those apps I mentioned, Paint 3D and Mixed Reality. Um, and those two integrate really nicely together. So you could be, uh, usually when we teach the class, we have uh, kids play around with Paint 3D, taking the 3D models or creating a 3D model. Um, it's really fun to like take a head and like draw the, the face or change the, the face shape and add hair and all those things. And then right within the app, you can switch on Mixed Reality Viewer and that'll open a different window where you are Seeing a camera, you could film yourself or film something uh, outside or wherever, and then you could put your animation, your um, your 3D model in there. And some of those 3D models that you find might already even be animated. Like I've seen people take like uh, animation, a 3D model of a bumblebee, and it's buzzing, and you know you could hold it and have it in your hand and talk about. You know, even for school, imagine doing like a, a video project presentation where um, you're incorporating those kind of fun, creative things that you can 
make on your computer. So, other than the Space Invaders game, what would you suggest that people get? Um, on... Or a sample within the page. Are there any other platforms that... Like, this seems like a really... Microsoft specifically is like, yeah, we want to get some people into, like, JavaScript code and learning how to animate using JavaScript. Are there any other platforms that um, Microsoft has gotten access to or built that kids could that kids could um, get do yeah I think another um, another really cool platform and it's not Microsoft owned but we use it in our classes I guess we have a, a partnership with them is uh, code.org have you ever used code.org yes I have yeah so it's pretty cool. There's a lot of different things you can do on there. The one that I'm familiar with is the App Lab, where you can follow tutorials to create an application, but then you can take what you learned and create your own app, which is really cool because you can even send it to yourself. Um, so that's another fun one that allows you to be really creative um, and learn something useful. Okay, so code.org is, um, I'm very familiar with it. It's got like some very good, fun, easy tutorials that basically parents could also log into and access. Like it's a mainly web, des web design based from my experience. So was this funded by Microsoft? Um, the code.org? Yes. You know, I don't think so. Um, I read about how it how it came about, and I'm actually not too sure about that. But I know that we definitely promote it a lot because we want schools to be aware of the different tools that they have access to to start infusing computer science into elementary education and uh, make it more mainstream. Okay, so I'm going to change things up. I think there, there should be a few pretty good guides. Um, if people have been able to install their Minecraft education and being able to um, get it to actually be able to log in, I'm going to show you uh, um, one other very good video. Now, I'll actually, walk you through some of the actual things that we're talking about in terms of basically the educational aspects, and we'll play and pause from that. So are we waiting for uh, everyone to download Minecraft on their devices? Um, some have been able to download, some haven't. Um, and right now they've got the username and everything else. I'm just kind of just pulling up something for them to be able to reference. 
because my Minecraft is, for whatever reason, stuck. So, on screen, and these are a lot of the different elements that you can actually um, use. Um, if they have carbon, all of these are things you can also make within um, the actual elemental So with um, if if everyone has already downloaded the Minecraft Education Edition, a lot of it is just self exploring, and the characters in the worlds will tell you what to do. Um, and so, yeah, they could um, the ones who've already downloaded the Education Edition. Do they have um, logins for that, or how? Um, right now, they're using the one login that I mentioned right at the top. Some of them actually already have Minecraft. So, so are, in Minecraft, are there some of these same elements in terms of AC chemistry and other tools that are within Minecraft? Or is um, Education I, Edition I, special for that? I believe that those are going to only, and I can double check, but I think those are only available in the education edition. So if they log, if they down, because that would be the app they have to download is the Minecraft education edition. So okay. I, I'm, I'm going to double check if the chemistry update, I'm pretty sure it's only in the, yeah, it's only in the education edition. So if they're just using regular Minecraft, they wouldn't be able to, um, use the chemistry features. Ah, so basically I'd be just using crafting features. Yes. Now online there's like seems like there's a few um, guides that people could use like if they're struggling with um, the actual Minecraft to actually help them with some of the recipes like because the recipes is kind of like if you have the amulet the um, the different tools within it you can actually uh, it's kind of hard sometimes to actually be able to access all of them uh, sorry I didn't catch that like, um, I know you guys provide um, this information, or I know that on the Minecraft website, you guys actually have, like, a chemistry lab journal. So basically, as I pulled up, you have, like, the element constructor, which basically allows you by basically moving around protons and neut neutrons and electrons. It's within the world. It's actually, the model is actually exactly what you would see right at the beginning of the world. And you can actually pull up and then actually if you know your chemistry or you can look up different elements that you might be interested in building, you actually can build those compounds and then be able to actually develop them and hold them in your crafting toolbox. Yes, I see that you're pulling up the guide to the different um, tools that are in the chemistry update on the Minecraft Education Edition. So yeah, so these tools, if, if anyone has downloaded the Minecraft Education Edition and has been able to... Um, log in then uh, they can you can uh, maybe type instructions for everyone on how to get to um, so once you log in um, going to the library and the lessons and science and then they could all try out the chemistry demo lesson yes. there it's right at the beginning of um when you first open up and you sign in, you're going to go to View Library. Then in View Library, you're going to go to Getting Started. And then you're going to go to Additional Lessons. In Additional Lessons, there where you'll find the Chemistry Lesson and also a Math and an Architectural Lesson. Click on the Chemistry Lesson, then Read Through, and then hit Create World. And then basically, you'll be within the Chemistry Lesson. You'll, be go you'll go open up in a, um, a very big room, and you'll see... a uh, 
NPC or not or an are not the, an NPC right in front of you. You can walk in, but if you look around the room, there'll be a tremendous amount of um, actual, there'll be a, a lot of different actual levels that you can use. Right, let me see if I can invite um, somebody into the meeting that might then would have it already logged on and may not be having the same problems that I am currently having. So someone said there's no chemistry lesson. If you are looking at the subjects, it would be within um, the science section. If you go to um, view library and then uh, subjects and then oh hi hi um, so I logged in so um, Mr. Simpicide can um, remotely use my computer Simbi could you please request that so I can give you access yes. Sorry, do I have to go to share screen in order for you to do that? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Let me first make you a co-host. Okay, and then remote control, I gave it to you. Or I should be giving it to you now. One second, please. Now, let me also go to OBS on my own screen. So could you pause the share so that I can broaden the actual chat? Uh, yes. Are you ready for me to share again? Yes. Okay. Okay, you should have access now and I will not touch my screen. And we'll see if it shows up on, it should show up. I'm just waiting for everybody to see it. Can, I, can we ask everyone if they can see it? Can everybody see it? I can. I think right now they're seeing yourself. Uh, right now we're still oh. waiting it for it to share it. Ah, there we go. So it's showing it. Yes, I see that. Okay, make great. Adjustments in OBS you can though. continue to use my screen. Okay, so you hit, saw me hit play. I'm going to have to adjust OBS though. Okay. Oh, I wish I had. Then you're going to hit li View Libraries. Then in View Libraries, you're going to go to How to Play, or you can go to Lessons. How to Play, then Additional Lessons, and then there's the Chemistry Tutorial. Hey, Camilla, is there a way for us to turn down the music? Uh, inside the game, um, I... I turn, yeah, I turn it down like on my computer, but then you won't be able to hear everyone. So yeah. it might be inside settings inside the game. Actually, I think it is inside of, um, if you press escape. Well, it looks like the music went down anyway. Okay. So great. So as you can see, um, yeah, move around to this place I need a mouse. So I'm going to still need help in terms of moving the mouse. Oh, 
sorry. So um, where, where am I supposed to turn it? Yeah, so basically we're going to go turn to the left. And then basically we're going to read some of the signs. Okay. Oh, nope. so I just that, that. that always happens. When you right-click, you actually destroy. So yes, right-clicking is a destroy. The first time I played Minecraft, I kept destroying all the signs. Because I, yeah, I do that. Oh my god. And, I, then, okay. <laughs> and whatever direction you... Point the mouse is where you're going to go. <laughs> you point the mouse and you're gonna you're gonna walk towards. Oh, okay, but I can't figure out how to back up. <laughs> you can back up with Press the S. S button. Yeah. S button, okay. <laughs> or you could, <laughs> or you could just um, yeah, I would recommend like turning your if you're using uh, your cursor to. Yeah, the... turn your cursor, then lift it up by pressing forward on it. Okay. Then you can break this glass. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Break the one below, too, so you can walk through it. Oh. Yeah. And then um, within this room, we're already but turn. We just missed the signs. Let's destroy <laughs> the signs. I'm sorry, everyone. And then let's, pre <laughs> let's press press S, so basically you can step a little bit back. Yeah, I keep pressing S, and it's not. Okay. You could also just turn your cursor around and then just walk in that direction. So I would, like, turn it and then press W so you can walk. Oh, W? Yeah, so uh, if you um, if you like lift your cursor up and then turn right, just yeah. I like to turn and then walk when I'm getting used to it, just so um, yeah. And then um, yeah, walk towards the right. Oops. No. <laughs> <laughs> Does it mean there's no way for you to do this? Um, unfortunately, uh, the, I can't guide it without the mouse, and it doesn't give me control of the mouse. Oh. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it oh, yeah. takes some getting, like, I had this whole experience when I tried out Minecraft, but luckily, like, kids are Minecraft experts, and, okay. Um, Basically, the orientation that you experience within uh, Minecraft is, um, kids pick up on that very quickly. Um, it's very different from, um, it's very well, different. they can see why they need to teach their parents about how to use a computer. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, there's keyboard and then there's also mouse. Like, some of the kids so, also struggled, especially when they first came to the environment of, like, moving the mouse while also using the keyboard. In the past, when you had typing class and you had actual how do you do use a computer class, which is what we're kind of reintroducing with Minecraft, you actually had that kind of etiquette tr trained into you before you actually came to some of these actual programs. And this is why I like yeah. how Minecraft has done it. Yes. So um, I would recommend just pressing. So you fell through like the bottom of the screen. And I don't know how to get out. But you could just press escape. And if you re-enter the tutorial, like it's totally. So just press save and exit. Yeah, save and exit. Okay, I'm sorry about this. Guy. No, no, no. <laughs> trust me. I definitely had. It's, uh, it's part of the learning of it is basically learning how to orientate yourself within it. Like, you could start it so with some of the movement lessons, because we're going to do that. So basically, some of the kids can see how to learn to move in it. So basically, you walk up to a sign, avoid hitting right-click, and just yeah. reading it. Left-click is, is also to engage, but make sure there's nothing in your hand, so basically, you don't break anything. Like, it tells okay. you about protons and neutrons. It tells you how many protons you'd need to actually create that element using the actual elemental constructor. So if you yes. make your cursor go down a little bit, then basically now look around, and then basically you should find one, which is an elemental constructor that you can actually use. It's actually going to be, you were right on it. It's, um, then it's right that click. thing that looks like a, uh, yep, you're, you're kidding. So it's you got can, a very uh, pixelated um uh, yeah, it's microscope. a pixelated microscope. So that's the element constructor. So if you right click it, awesome. So that okay. pulls up. <laughs> if you um, also fell into the command place, um, just hit, <laughs> just hit escape at the top left of your keyboard. That's um, E S C in the top left of your keyboard. Then hit. Then hit um, save and exit. Okay. 
then go back through the steps to get back to the same lesson. It is a little I'm bit confusing <laughs> for parents as well. It's I okay. Them skills. <laughs> no, you taught them how it, it takes some practice. Um, okay, I'm typing in the instructions to get out. So. Oh, okay. Um, so what would you like me to do from here? I'm on the element constructor. Okay, then move the cursor down, and right in front of you is the elemental constructor. No, so I'm on it. All right. You shouldn't be standing. Okay, so yes, you're there. Then now put, like, it asks you to make one one proton. Just put in one proton. You could either hit plus or minus, the one oh, okay. neutron, and one electron. So I'm good. And then that shows you what elements you would actually be, be creating. Do you see uh, it? Wow. You see all the way in the nice little corner. It's like when you're looking through a microscope, of course, this is a super powerful microscope. But this is how you'd actually like them. Um, I'm sure everyone or, or most viewers have seen Iron Man and how he created his ex special element for his Iron Man suit. This is kind of what you're doing with the element constructor. So you can now... Like, it also had the next step, which was actually showing you how to create um, another element. Yeah, so um, it on the on that chalkboard, if you exit out there, um, it, it'll, it, it should tell you, if you move a little bit to the left, yeah. So you made hydrogen, and now it tells you what you need to make sodium. So then you can, yeah, so you can open up the, right-click the, micro, the microscope there below. And now, yep. It was 11, right? Yes. yes. 11. 11 of each. Yeah, and as you're adding the electrons, you see the valence shells. If I remember that from chemistry class, how those yeah. get added. And then neutrons. And then now too. you need so to add your neutrons as well, 11 neutrons. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's why it wasn't showing. Okay. Yeah, so it's cool because you can see right in real time oh if you make a sodium. mistake it doesn't show up and then if you want to add that to your inventory you can just click that na which is sodium and then and drag then it to your inventory it. yeah and then you can click it down there cool. mm. then now you can try to play around with it like if you know the um com like some parent your parent could help you out with the composition for like carbon or for yeah variety of different things, a variety of different elements that basically you can collect. Is it okay if I go and talk to this NPC? Yes. Yeah. Oh, by the way, guys, NPC is non-player character. Oh, wait, how do I talk to someone? Right click. You, right, yep. Okay. And then basically what they'll give you is the actual journal that we looked at earlier, which kind of goes through what each one of the tools are. Yeah, so if you were to click that, it's going to take you out of Minecraft and open up a website, so you don't necessarily have to click that. And that book icon is going to open up something called Immersive Reader, which is really great, especially for young students or if you're still learning um, how to read or even if you have some challenge visually. If you click that, it's going to open up the text to be editable so you can make it larger, you can have it read out loud to you. So that's really helpful, especially for younger students. But you don't have to necessarily click that now. Yeah. Uh, where would you like me to walk next? All right. If you um, walk up back closer to the um, microscopes that you were just at. See, I've gotten more used to it. Yeah. <laughs> you even got doing a moonwalk. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, so do you want me to click on one of them? Or... Um, okay, so turn around. So you're on the microscope now. Turn around more to the right. Just like your cursor. Move it over to a little bit. Uh, a little bit more to the right. There's a chalkboard actually right following that chalkboard. So that chalkboard is on your right. You some, oh, yeah, this one? Yeah. yeah. So walk oh, in front okay. of that one so you can see what it says there. All right. So. This um this lesson is really just showing you the different tools that are part of Minecraft Education Edition. So first it showed you the element constructor. Now it's going to introduce you to the compound creator, which allows you to combine elements into compounds. So you made elements in the first one. 
But now you can take those elements and put them together and make things like sodium acetate, which it's going to have you do here. And so um, as it says on the chalkboard, you have a chest that has different elements inside of it, and you're going to take those out and create something. So if you back up a little bit. Is it right there? Yeah, uh, that's the compound creator, but we can't make any. Well, you, you could make sodium hydrogen, but that's not going to do anything. Oh, no, uh, don't right. destroy those. <laughs> oh, sorry. That has things in it, so basically you can actually um, get those elements for the lesson for, for you. Did you uh, right click? I think. Yeah, I opened it. I did. <laughs> that's why I heard <laughs> Yeah, that. I know. <laughs> Yeah, um, and so if left click. To worse, you can just exit and go right back in, and it'll all be there. But um, I'm pretty sure, Cindy, correct me if I'm wrong, but she should right click and then it's going to open. So if I have a Mac, do I also right click? Um, <laughs> it should be the same. Yes. It should, yes, okay. Then now you can so, grab all of those things and put it in your inventory. Yes. You got it. Just take them so one at a time. transferring those items, and they're in your inventory. And then now you can click on the compound creator. And, yep. Uh, can you read out what it was? Because I don't... Yeah, so that was carbon, hydrogen, sodium, and oxygen. And you're going to make sodium acetate. Did you put that in there? Uh -huh. Boom. There it is. And you just added that to your inventory. And it's actually, uh, looks like you, oh, so that bottom bar on the bottom of your screen, you see how you have like those boxes, you have um, carbon, oxygen, and then seven other boxes. That's the things that you have of like in your hand, basically, like the, you have carbon in your hand. If you press the number two, you would have the oxygen in your hand. And if you press the number three, you'd have just your bare hand. So that's how you kind of move between the different objects in your inventory. But if you press E on your keyboard, then you can pull anything, like literally anything into your inventory, whether it's like brick or stone or glass or whatever. Um, and you can even search for, if you go to the, if the gray bar, the search bar, so you could type in something like element, and then you see that thing is the microscope. So in any world you go to, you could put a, mic a microscope in your inventory, and then you could place a mi uh, mi that, mi that element constructor slash microscope into your world and be able to create elements, just like, just like this um, chemistry tutorial has in the world. So that's how you would be able to like take all the things that's introducing to you in this lesson and bring it to any world that you are playing around in. So if you're like starting with a blank hosted world, then basically you could all these tools you just memorize what the what they're called and then pull them up and then actually be able to place them within the world so you can use them. Yeah. So um, there's I think one more. Yeah. There's one more chalkboard back there near the NPC. All right, so now it's introducing you to the lab table. So it looks a little different than the compound creator. So discover amazing products made possible through chemistry. Add elements and compounds to the table, then press combine when ready. Use the materials provided. Try creating an ice bomb by combining exactly four sodium acetates. Okay, so let's see what's inside your chest. Okay, so that, yep. So you're dragging that into your inventory, and that number on the sodium acetate is just the number of that item that you have. And then now you can right-click. Um, yep. So click oh, wait. it. Uh, like, how do I do four? Um, okay, see how one was placed? And then, yep. Uh, oh, what? Uh, you right click it several times so basically reduces how many you're actually taking out. Oh, okay, I get it. So that's yeah, right. Do that one more time and then put the rest back. <laughs> yeah. In your yeah you may have too many. Oh wait, do I have to take like a look? Wait. 
Because, like, if you have too much of certain things, it'll actually cause an explosion. Oh, I get it. Okay. You could also just, um, is there a way to just drop them all? Do you? Yeah, Sometimes you can. it's, like, in my muscle memory, so if I'm doing it, I get it. But then when I'm, like, trying to explain it, then I don't. Okay, so, yeah, you have a few. I feel like we should ask the people watching, what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> what should you create? Give me my, give me directions, please, because Miss Melissa's not doing too good. I, because I have so many. <laughs> do we have any Minecraft experts <laughs> in, in your class? Oh, we have a few oh, students. Oh, look, okay, so now it's, uh, it recognizes that it's correct, and it's experimenting. So should I do combine? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and there you go. Now. You now have that <laughs> element in your inventory. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to not risk, like, throwing it, you <laughs> could also just press the number four, and that way you'll have, like, your blank hand. Yeah. Sometimes I do that just so I don't risk, like, throwing something that I created before I wanted to. Okay. So um, I think there's a one more chalkboard. If you turn around to the right or the left, you're kind of equally in the middle. Um, to turn your cursor over to the left. Uh, sorry, uh, this way? Yes. You want me to go to the top, like behind yeah. the teleporter? Uh huh. And then that chalkboard is going to introduce the last piece of, yes, the material reducer. So that's a really cool tool because you can take any object that you find in a Minecraft world and be able to break it down and actually see the elements that make up that object. So um, they've given you some materials in the chest to play around with. And go ahead and open, right click on the chest. This one's the chest, right? Yes. And you can put um, some of those different objects. You can put it also right there and, and that, that bottom line is going to be your, yeah, you can put it there too. Uh -huh. oh, okay. So you have a water bucket, you've got magnesium something. Your oak log. Uh-huh. So, yeah. yeah, you could uh -huh, put some of them right in there, yep. Okay. All right. So then you're going to click, yep, yep, that's your material reducer. And whatever, yeah, try the water bucket first and put it right there on the top first step. Yep, and that's going to break it down. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you've got two hydrogens and an oxygen there. So that shows you, oh, and now you switch it to lava. So in lava, what do you, let's ask the students maybe what they see that makes it, well, they might not recognize that. What, um. Oh, should I go oh, back to water? Sorry. Yeah, water might be a good one. Yeah, there we go. So yes, we are a little bit past time, but if you're still interested, we are still going to continue because we did have a few technical issues right at the beginning. Um, so you can still get some of the lesson in terms of basically what the elemental compounders do, what the actual material reducer do, does, and basically go through that basic lesson. Um, thank you for those that basically, thank you for your patience and also thank you for being a part of the Kathy community. Once again, we are running a Steam Stream 18 discount on our summer camps that are out in Rockville, Maryland, and also in um, Columbia, Maryland. Also at the same time, there are also wonderful classes that Microsoft will be introducing, and we'll obviously advertise those as well, along with our own classes, and also continuing our partnership with some of the other things that we're also doing with Microsoft in terms of developing some of the other some of the curriculum and also making some visits to the store once it hopefully is open backed up but if but if you're still interested we are going to continue for a little bit more just to kind of go through the basic lesson then you can actually see how you can use some of these in your own Minecraft education using the login and password for about the next three days as as a, as you use your own Minecraft education once it downloads Okay, so do we want to continue? Oh, yes, sure, sorry. Yeah, so, um, yeah, try a few more different objects there in the material reducer. It, it won't let, uh, 
you have to take one out and then basically then it'll tell you what its uh, chemical composition is. If it's a mystery chemical, there is a way to actually stack those up and then you can create a portal to another world. <laughs> I did not even know that. that is yes, like um, if you reduce certain materials, like that one with the brick, if you take all the, and you put them all in a circle, you can actually create a teleport. For the, for, yeah, because since it's a mysterious element, it allows you to create a portal as long as you know how to set the code and everything else for that as well. Oh, wait, well. sorry, so where's the brick? Which is the brick? This thing? Uh, yeah, the nether rock or the other one as well. Like wherever, okay, so whichever here, element gives you that this? with the one with the three question marks, that's okay. what you use to build up. You can build up your actual. You can actually use it to build up and basically be able to use it for actually creating and stacking a gateway, and then you can go into a, an underworld uh, vol volcanic uh, area, wow. <laughs> which is programmed within the game, which is interesting. So anything you drop, you can you can pick back up. What you've done is actually you've taken things out of your inventory. <laughs> so you just walk over it to be able to collect it, but right now your inventory is full. So what you want to do is you want to actually store all that stuff. You don't want to fall back to the uh, bottom. clear something out of my inventory? Hit E. Like, e? Oh, okay, and I can just move it up. Oh, mm -hmm. I... You yeah, because you have an unlimited inventory because of the... You're in a... Uh, creative mode so you can pull anything from the unlimited inventory and put anything back but if you were in like adventure mode or something or, or survival mode like you would be able to do that uh, and some lessons are in that mode but you guys want to go to another lab should we go to the chemistry lab if you um if you go to that robot that had the, that was labeled teleporter uh where was he he was yep oh you were just over him. Um, right yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. So if you right click him. Oh, okay. Uh, what, where would you like me to go? Um, you could, well, first maybe we could check out. You can decide, um, Simbisai. I was going to say maybe the, we could, because you can always teleport right back really easily. We could check out the periodic table. Yeah. Or the, or whatever you all want. You guys can. Decide. I'd say the periodic, periodic table. And then you can see all the elements and you can actually collect them if you want to. So this is a very good introduction to actually get your child used to actually seeing an elemental chart. It does have it somewhat color coded so you actually know what sums are what's the gas, what's a if you then you can now some of the other higher level stuff is when you're doing the element creator, like you, as you can see, there's ones where you can see the numbers, but then Actual, the actual breakdown of those actual elements is something you, your child could then look up and then create. Okay. Yeah, and then there's always the, you know, uh, in a lot of these worlds, you have these characters. I don't know if Dimitri says anything useful. I think he's just a scientist there, but he might have something to say. He might, I don't remember. Yeah, he's just uh, observing <laughs> the table <laughs> along with us there um and then if you look around the teleporter robot should be somewhere on the left i believe okay and uh should i go to the creature hall yeah sure i don't remember what uh what's over there but it's creature containment <laughs> <laughs> Do you know um, what's happening here in the creature hall? Well, the, well, within the creature containment, this is where you can actually do some sample code in terms of actually creating creatures based off of the code that's provided in the block codes. Like if you go inside the area and you press C, which will allow you to get to the actual coding menu. So should she go up the stairs? Uh, yes. Right. Now you have to choose. Now we do... Have some affiliation with Tinker, but not yet. But I'll say you hit Microsoft Make Blocks, as we C. mentioned before. Yeah, so you press C. That opens up the code builder right within the game. Oh, okay. And, and then now where it says Microsoft Make Code. Okay. And then you have all that different types of code that you can actually apply. Oh, okay. Oh, oops. I closed it.
what do people want? Should we ask the chat? Um, do you the want act, a rabbit The invasion? chat is, <laughs> they're mentioning what the element was called. Now they want you to build a lab. <laughs> they want me to build a lab. Oh my. <laughs> uh, can I do that here? Build a wall, right? You can, um, I'm not sure where I saw someone say build a lab, but you could build a lab by just opening up your inventory and pulling out those things like the compound creator, material reducer, and all that. But um, oh. this is kind of cool too because in Code Builder, you can learn the code to make things happen in, in Microsoft, in, in uh, Minecraft. Um, Yeah, you, um, there's also, if you go back to the teleporter, one of the things that you can teleport to is a space that is to, to build a lab and play around with that. Oh, okay. Um. I think I would talk to him again. So, uh, so, so would, said, was there something else in, um, in that space that you wanted to point out? Did she go inside when she, then you can create like mutated animals that attack each other? That's kind of cool. <laughs> I didn't, act, I haven't played around with that one just yet. I mean, that would. Because you can have be them spawn and then you can, then you can add them to be more aggressive or not. It's pretty cool. Okay. You can walk her through that one too. This one is just to, um, it oh, gives wow. you the, a chest to get those different chemistry features and build a, space for science experiments you could also I mean decorate your lab put some plants in it and whatever you want to make it creative and your own you could do that too okay. well how do I oh wait how do I select something and put it out there so you have something in your hand. I think that might be the compound creator. Um, and then to place it, you uh, left click. So you can walk to wherever in this nice space you want to set up your material. And you can just, um, oh wait, did I mix that up? Try right clicking. And if you're pointing too far away, uh, it's not gonna, you have to point uh, the the block, yep, yeah, the block will kind of outline with a black li like that, and you'll be able to see um, that it can be placed. If you're pointing too far, it won't. So um, you could then press the number four, and that way you're on the next item. Now you're on the compound creator. Lab no, uh, the compound creator was what I was putting out. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Okay. They all yeah. kind of look very similar Wait. when they're on that tiny inventory belt and in this education edition anything you put down is infinite so you could put like several compound creators oh okay oops i keep uh forgetting <laughs> oh yeah that i still sometimes that is right <laughs> So what do I want to do with all these compound creators? So if you were to go out and um, maybe you create things in this world, you could come back and experiment here because this this section is just to kind of design your own lab so you could be creative oh. and, and put whatever you want there. Okay. Um, but then if you go back to the teleporter, there's other kind of spaces that you can play around in. Um, Simbasai, is there one that you think would be cool to show? There is, um, I was kind of curious about that creature. There's a creature area, like, if you go out of here, there's the helium balloon experiment. Then there's the one which is, like, the animal pen, where you can actually spawn them and give them uh, actual traits. So if you go, right. like, um, it's, if you walk out that door, then you turn to your right. Like, you don't need the teleporter. Oh, so I shouldn't teleport. I should go... And then basically walk out the... Well, you teleport. Then I break the ice. So go out, and then basically... Oh. Oh, I accidentally 
me through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it shows its versatility. Because when you're making your actual own lab, you can do a lot of different things with it. I now have it floating in ice. Right now, um, it seems so. Right now, it doesn't seem like we have too many other questions. It seems like um, we're gonna okay. just we're gonna wrap well, up. Well, I guess like how can Cafe continue to work with you and like can they hear about what you do with us? Oops, you got cut off for a second. I didn't hear the full question. Um, how can we work with uh, Microsoft in terms of basically both your location and also virtually what you're doing that basically could really support what we're trying to do with like Minecraft education and just like. Microsoft Education's availability and uses for our students and our community. Yeah, there's a lot of things. So, um, I mean, this was this was really cool. This was actually my first time doing like a YouTube live stream, and I I think it's really cool to see how you are showing and kind of learning in front of your students. So I I think things like this are uh, a great opportunity. Also, I, I'd love to join again. Um, and then in, in the Microsoft Store, we definitely we welcome field trips. So your, um, your students and, your, and all of you are welcome to come and do a class with us and then kind of take what we show you with the different things that we do with our Surface Pros and our Office 365 and Minecraft and then take that back to um, make your own version of it and do it with your students. And I'd love to definitely keep in touch and see the cool things that you're doing. I, I, I learned about the that creature thing that you mentioned. I hadn't <laughs> even explored that part of it. Well, so I'd seen really cool. like, well, I was teaching the kids to do some code, and then they figure out a way to make very aggressive um, animals. I was like, oh, how did you do that? So as you stated before, like we may know things about code. We may have some already preconceived knowledge and assumptions but the imagination and power of imagination of the kids is really incredible and that's something that we wanted to tap into at Kathy because we feel that as like Microsoft itself acknowledged was like okay young kids are not getting exposed to it in the way they should they kind of just showed the end result but they're not necessarily shown like all the other study that was put in to produce the end result of the iPad of the Zooms of the Microsoft surfaces. So in some ways, them be able to experience the different codes even in this kind of environment is a huge thing that basically can uh, just step them forward and get them engaged on another level. Well, yeah, and I'd love to see what you will um, create and learn as you play around with it. I, I wish I had more time to just play around with Minecraft and discover these things, but I think it's just really cool to see and observe what, what other people are buying. Um, and the coding features and everything built inside of it. Uh, I think I'm going to clo close out of uh, Minecraft. Yeah, we can wrap uh, up. Sure. So, uh, Cindy, I actually need you to go oh, wait. Yep, you can. There we go. <laughs> So thank you, everybody, for being, being on stream. I know it was a lot. Um, I know that we did make a few different types of changes. Um, but... Thank you for being so patient and still being engaged and being involved. So, um, thank you so much for coming today. Once again, we still have the Steam Stream 18 code discount code going on for our different classes out in Rockville, Maryland, and Columbia, Maryland, our summer camps. And as, as always, we're also developing and starting next week our virtual classes. So if you're interested in registering, Please look us up. Or look, look us up on our website. We'll also be providing a link down below and also within the chat, so they see you'll be able to come and see that. May see. We'll also, whenever Microsoft has any other things going on in terms of like the Arcade Maker and other coding, coding kind of things that we can be involved in as well, we'll let you know as well. So once again, thank you very much for being on stream, and leave a like or subscribe. Thank you. <laughs>